Today I'm going to talk about how information about biodiversity can be visualized using Wikidata and Scolia. Um, my name is Danny Mietjen and I've done this together with Steph Tushka, Tina Higa, Mo Bernard Camille Musso and Jonathan Jeschke. And we're all based at the uh, Leibniz Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries IGB in Berlin. You can find the slides and uh, the abstracts at these indicated DOIs. So, structure of the talk, I will introduce Wikidata, I'll introduce Scolia, then I will explain a bit about the visualizations that they offer and then provide an outlook. In the meantime, you're welcome to explore Scolia by yourself and of course Wikidata as well. So, what is Wikidata? Uh, you can choose, and pick one site basically, and then briefly browse through. We don't have the time to go into all the details. Here you have it in, in words and here in numbers. So you can see it as the edit button of the semantic web. Um, it has 100 million items, including, for instance, 3.6 million taxa. Um, and you can use those 100 million items uh, together with 11,000 properties uh, to express things and this has happened 14 billion times so 14 billion triples exist of the kind that Rubus Ideos um, has the iNaturalist taxon ID uh, 54436 so that is one triple and there are 14 billion of those and there, that graph is crude a hundred several hundreds uh, of times per second um, besides all these concepts, there is also um, a growing collection of lexemes, so words and phrases. So, for instance, the Bulgarian word Malina uh, basically uh, identifies uh, the raspberry uh, here. And then there are schemas which try to describe um, certain things uh, and provide a mechanism to describe uh, things of a certain class. So, for instance, here is a schema for taxon treatments. It is also a community of roughly 23,000 monthly contributors, of which most are humans, 300 are bots, and they make uh, on the order of several hundreds of edits per minute in hundreds of languages altogether. And all of this has happened over the last 10 years. Um, it's yeah, open by design, fair by design, multilingual, global, and so on. Um, to zoom in on some aspect of biodiversity, here is just one template that is used to keep track of how Wikidata interacts with um, a number of databases in the field of taxonomy. Um, it's not important to read uh, for you, just um, important to know that there is a lot. Um, now, Scolia, uh, in short, is a visualization engine that makes use of the data from um, Wikidata and it provides profiles of people, institutions, um, journals, publishers, topics, and you can combine these profiles and you can use certain unknown identifiers like DUIs or ORCIDs to uh, reach those uh, profiles uh, if you don't know the Wikidata identifier for these things you want to profile. Yeah, so um, some examples um, for the different profile types um, you, you can basically um, use them as a component in the URL. And so here the topic uh, profile for the thing identified by this uh, identifier, which is seed dispersal. Uh, here we have the taxon profile for uh, the taxon of Phragmetus australis. And there are other kinds of profiles for genes, pathways, and so on. Um, each profile has several panels that are based on predefined queries to the Wikidata query service um, using Sparkle. And uh, these queries are uh, yeah, predefined except for uh, some key element, which is uh, the identifier of the thing that is to be profiled. And so if you provide it with that, if you provide that predefined Sparkle query with that identifier, it is a valid Sparkle query. It will give you valid results and uh, all of this is packaged in HTML and uh, yeah, multiple such panels are being combined in order to form a profile page. Um, yeah, and yeah, each of these panels has a certain function. So for instance, here I've linked to the panel that 
shows resources that are co-used uh, with the software uh, image J on the software profile. Another uh, profile type is that for authors and um, uh, uh, for each profile type we have a curation page and uh, so this is demoed here in the case of an author curation page so you have the, the profile type indicated then parameterized by the parameter here for Pavel Stoev and then indicated that there is the curation page. Okay, um, so the kinds of visualizations that you can see in one profile type here for topic uh, is highlighted here by the table of contents of that profile. Uh, in general, the visualizations can have different types, tables, bar charts, different kind of charts, graphs, timelines, maps, image grids, and so on. You can go combine uh, several items or you can look at just one. Um, most of these panels here, they uh, come directly from the Wikidata Query Service with some customization. Um, but we ha do have occasionally some other uh, additional sources, for instance, Wikipedia, Wikisource, or Wembedder. Um, to navigate between different elements of these uh, profiles, uh, there are uh, different mechanisms to interactively sort and filter. Uh, there are lots of links between the different profile types, like from, from the topic profile you can uh, jump over to uh, the profiles, to the author profiles of the authors that have published on the topic, or to the uh, venue profile of the journals that have published on the topic, and so on. Um, you can use various redirects uh, to navigate and also from each uh, panel there are links to the uh, underlying Sparkle query on the query service and to the underlying unparameterized Sparkle query um, that uh, sits on GitHub. Yeah, um, now we're zooming in a bit further. So here you have the full profile topic profile for a topic, seat this person in this case. You see different kinds of visualizations uh, together. This is all linked by the way, so you can uh, explore this in more detail later on. The width here is basically screen width. Um, the next profile here is the author curation profile for Pavel Stoyev. Um, and so all of these things highlight things that are known to be incomplete on his profile. And uh, so they basically provide a mechanism for crowdsourcing um, the improvement of such profiles. Then here we have the software profile for a particular piece of software. Um, yeah, and this is a taxon profile for a species. Um, now, zooming in a bit further, this is one individual panel in one individual profile for one particular um, work. So this paper basically has its work profile and then uh, that work profile has multiple panels, including this one, which then uh, lists a number of statements for which this paper has been used as a reference. So these statements are about a particular type specimen which is uh, the holotype of a species, and it is kept in the Museum Koenig. Um, yeah, so what can we do on that basis? Um, Scolia can help to explore Wikidata. It can also help identify the highlights and the gaps in certain areas of Wikidata. Um, it can, in principle, be extended to other um, knowledge graphs beyond Wikidata and uh, it uh, can also provide additional profile types. For instance, uh, we could think about having a profile type for type specimens or for certain kinds of um, natural history collections. And here, if you have ideas in this regard, um, that would be nice to discuss. Uh, this does not come without challenges. Wikidata is incomplete, although it's large. It has lots of inconsistencies um, although there are also checks and balances, um, so there are ways to kind of um, be informed about inconsistencies and to work systematically on reducing them. Um, it is changing constantly, including in terms of its data models, and it is not necessarily straightforward to navigate, uh, although lots of tools exist to facilitate, and Scolia is just one of them. 
uh, there are opportunities for interacting with this um, community and infrastructure because Wikidata provides a framework for scalable collaborative creation that includes, for instance, citizen science. Um, it is increasingly integrated with all sorts of workflows around open science and open cultural heritage. Uh, it is relatively sustainably funded compared to many research infrastructures and can assist in making data more fair, more findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. It has an active community and uh, infrastructure is relatively robust. It has the advantage that if something uh, is no, known to be wrong or in need of fixing, it can be fixed relatively straightforwardly um, because it's an open system and it can help through its integration with many different databases. It can help highlight issues in those other databases or inconsistencies between databases. Um, and it can also help uh, improve other parts of the research ecosystem. For instance, it can help make systematic reviews more reproducible uh, by <coughs> providing all the necessary um, data and metadata about the things you might want to query. Yeah, with that, I would like to thank the TEDWIC organizers, the Wikimedia community, the biodiversity community, um, who have um, collaborated to provide the biodiversity information that you can find in Wikidata and visualize via Scolia. I'd like to thank the contributors to Scolia and the funders uh, who have supported uh, activities around uh, integrating invasion biology information into Wikidata and also um, software related information. Yeah, thank you very much.